Welcome, this is Jennifer, glad you're here. So today I'm sharing five different glazing techniques. These are techniques that are done with translucent embossing powders, and my favorites are definitely from Tim Holtz, his embossing glaze. Now you can do some of these techniques with regular embossing powders too. I'll talk about that as we go. But you'll see that the line of embossing glaze is great for so many different unique looks. I'm really excited about the five techniques that we're doing today because they're all very different, but there are many more things you can do with embossing glaze, and I will link to a video I've done in the past with even more ideas up here in the top right and in my description below. These six powders right here are the newest in the Tim Holtz embossing glaze line. He also has some colors that he previously released and all of them coordinate with distress ink colors he has. Those six in the middle there that are bright, those are the newest ones and I think they're beautiful. Now embossing glaze is a type of embossing powder that is translucent. So it is a colored powder, but you can see through it. And because of that, you can do some really cool layering techniques, emboss resist, and much more. And I'll share all that today. It does look very different in person than a opaque embossing powder that has color. Opaque means you can't see through it. There are other translucent embossing powders out there, but this is a complete line of beautiful colors meant to go with the Distress Ink line. I just like that there is such a complete collection of colors, so I was able to create many different colorful cards today. Let's start with the easiest technique first, and this is to create a colorful glaze over a stamped image. This allows you to create a very simple but bold card in any colors you want. I will also show you what it looks like when you mix some of the embossing glaze together. I kept my card designs for this particular technique very simple so the glaze can shine. Now for the stamping, I'm using the new Simon Says Stamp Spring Stems stamp set. I thought these beautiful daffodil images would be great as a focal point on the card. For sentiment, I'm using the new Simon Says Stamp Well Wishes stamp set. This is a 6x8 stamp set with large, bold sentiments that are great for encouragement cards, which I've been sending more of in the last two years than I ever have. There are coordinating dies available to cut out the large words in this, and there are smaller sentiments that you can team up together or use on the inside of the card. I'll be using this a few times today. Now I have my Misty stamping tool here, and I have a piece of white cardstock that is four and a quarter by five and a half inches. I have arranged some stamps here. I have my daffodil, the have faith sentiment, and then a smaller sentiment that says, things will be okay. I'm stamping those all with black ink right onto the white cardstock. I will do the same thing with four or five pieces. I want to create multiple cards with this technique, each with different colors, just to demonstrate some different looks and to have more encouragement cards on hand. Now it's time to create the mask that will allow us to do that bold rectangle of color over our stamped image. I'm using the Simon Says Stamp Mini Slimline Rectangle Die Set to do this. You could hand cut the rectangle if you prefer or use any shape. This card design is inspired by a card that I did uh, in a previous video. I'll link to it here. You can see the card up on the top right. In that case, I just did ink blending and stamping over a stamped image. Here I'm doing the glaze, so it'll have a little bit of dimension and a lot of shine. Just a different look, but same general design. So I use the rectangle to cut a block out of this one piece, and I'm lining it over another stamped piece. So this is going to be my mask, and I'll just tape it on the top so it doesn't shift. Now I'm using Versamark ink and an ink blending tool to apply a generous amount of the Versamark ink over that opening, so over that rectangle. Now Versamark ink is a clear sticky ink, and I like to apply it with my mini ink blending tool from Tim Holtz, but you could go direct to paper with your ink pad. You could even use an embossing dauber. Anything you want to put that clear sticky ink over that opening. I then remove the mask and I put on my first color of embossing glaze, which is Twisted Citron. I put a heavy amount on the bottom. Then I took a pinch of the glaze and kind of sprinkled it along the top edge so it wasn't as harsh of a line. It kind of fades up. 
Notice that the powder is only sticking to the area that we did that verse mark because it's that clear sticky ink. Next, I have the cracked pistachio color and I'll pour this on the bottom half. So I'm overlapping the green that we already have on there. I will again pinch a little bit and sprinkle it along the top edge so it blends up to the next color we add. Now I am doing this over hot dog little holders here. I used to use coffee filters but I found that these work even better because of the shape and I reuse them over and over. It's easy to kind of create a funnel and pour the extra powder back into the jar. Now that last color is Salty Ocean, I just poured it over the remaining area, knocked away any excess powder with a brush, and now I am heat setting. Some people like to heat set from the back side to get a smoother result, but I find with the glazes, it really gives a smooth result no matter if you heat from the back or the front. So you can experiment on your own. But what I'll have is this bold block of color over our stamped image. Again, these are translucent or see-through powders. So you have the tinted color to it. Now you could have just done ink blending and then done clear embossing powder on top, but you can layer up the embossing glaze and the color stays very true through all of the layers and it gives an amazing look. So I thought I would repeat the process to make the glaze layer thicker. You don't have to if you don't want to. I just really like that look. So I use my anti-static powder tool, and now I'm applying another layer of Versmark ink right on top of the glaze we did. Just make sure it's cool before you do that. And I'm repeating the same process I did before. So I did the Twisted Citron, the Cracked Pistachio, and the Salty Ocean. And I make sure I do that little sprinkle of color along the edge to keep it from having that harsh line. It gives a much better blended look this way. Now keep in mind, the more layers you do, the more intense that color will build up, but it'll also be smoother and raised and the shine is gorgeous. Now here's another example. I'm using the same mask and I'm applying Versamark ink over that rectangle opening again. This time I'm only doing little spots of color over the inked area. Since I'm doing smaller areas, I will use that pinch technique where I pinch a little bit of the glaze and sprinkle it over the Versamark ink. I will then just knock the excess off onto the little hot dog holder so that I can funnel that back into my jar when I'm done. So I'm applying picked raspberry, we have wild honey here, twisted citron, and salty ocean. So I'm making sure that I overlap these. You want to make sure that you overlap so that you have a little bit of blending in the end. If you are good about knocking the first color off before you go into the next color, you don't really have to worry about contaminating the powder that you put back into the jar. By the way, I also added the mustard seed, the yellow color too. So you can see I'm every time overlapping the colors. Now the results from this will be very different than if you did ink blending of colored inks and then clear embossing on top. As this heat sets, you'll see that you can see the sprinkling pattern of the embossing powder. And that really creates a unique look that you couldn't create with ink and clear embossing powder. This will end up heat setting and be a beautiful glaze in that rectangle shape over our stamped image. Now this time I only did the one layer of glaze and you'll see it's nice and smooth. You could add another layer if you wanted. I glued these panels to the front of four and a quarter by five and a half inch top folding white note cards. And I stamped the same daffodil image on matching envelopes. So it kind of completed the look. I did add a few black gemstones here and there to each card for a bit of added sparkle and dimension. Here's a closer look at that blending that we got between the embossing glaze colors and the solid raised shine that we have. Now here is another example that I did with the same design, but I changed out the sentiment. This would be a good basic card design that you could leave the sentiment off of and then add what you need. Maybe a sympathy, thank you, birthday, anything you want up there on the top right. This next example is similar, but I just put everything at an angle just for a different look. And I ended up liking this one a lot and I plan to make some more. And then finally, we have the bold, colorful one. And when you take a close look at this, notice how in the color transitions from one color to another, you have that speckled or sprinkled look. 
I think that is gorgeous and something you really could only achieve with these translucent embossing powders. So this is definitely a technique I'll be doing again in the future and is great for a background. Okay, let's go to our next technique, which is completely different than the last one. In this case, I make an impression of a background stamp into layers of embossing glaze. You can do this with embossing powder, but it looks so much better with the glaze. For this, I'm starting out by building up a panel that is very thick of cardstock. So I'm taking a piece of heavyweight white cardstock and I'm putting a sheet of double-sided adhesive on the back. I will cut these down into a few panels of the same size and then stick them all together. This way I'll have kind of like a chipboard panel. The thicker it is, the better to prevent the warping. So I did three layers thick with the adhesive in between each. You could also use a piece of chipboard here if you prefer. Recycled chipboard is even great, like the packaging from a cereal box. Okay, now on top of that layered cardstock, I am adding verse marking, just going direct to paper, covering it entirely. I then will pour on Twisted Citron, I love this color, and cover that entire panel. Now at first I had it temporary, temporarily glued to a piece of scrap cardstock, that's what's on the back, but decided to remove that. After heat setting that, I let it cool for a few seconds and then I applied another layer of Versamark ink on top. Make sure it's completely cooled. And I applied another layer of the Twisted Citron. If you wanted to, you could switch to a different color and get a mixed look. So you can do like a custom embossing glaze color. Maybe mix the green with the blue to get kind of a teal color. So here I have two layers on. Once this is cool, I'll press the Versamark ink on top again and put another layer of the Twisted Citron. I'm going to do four layers like this. We want this to be very heavy, very shiny, and it almost starts to look like a tile. You could do this with regular embossing powder, such as silver. I'll link to a video where I show that up here on the top right. But when you do this with the see-through embossing glazes, it almost looks like a jelly bean. It's really cool, the look that you get, kind of like glass on top. Okay, now this time, on top of the Versamark ink, I sprinkled on some Salty Ocean Blue just embossing glaze. So this will just give me some kind of splotches of blue along this. Again, I already have lots of layers of Twisted Citron underneath there, and I'll put Twisted Citron over the remaining ink. Now I'll heat set this, and you get this kind of tie-dye look. You could do marble this way. You could do all kinds of looks. Now I'm gonna put more layers on top of this and that blue will disappear. I just wanted to show you that this is an option. When doing this technique, you can mix different colors together all that you want. Now I ended up doing five or six layers of the Twisted Citron with a little Salty Ocean in there. And then for this last layer, I just sprinkled on some gold glitter embossing powder. So this is traditional gold glitter embossing powder. You could also sprinkle in glitter if you prefer. And then over the remaining Versamark ink that's exposed, I put on the Twisted Citron. Now when I heat set this, it's really cool because that gold looks like it's kind of um, moving through the green that we have layered up so thick. You'll notice as you're heat setting this many layers that it almost looks like you can see the layer moving as the heat gun applies to it. Now I ended up putting down too much gold. I didn't want that much gold showing, so I decided to hide it a little bit by doing a seventh layer of the Twisted Citron. Now I have a lot of layers on this. You don't need this many. Five layers of the glaze is enough to do this technique and it's definitely worth it. Keep in mind, these kind of embossing powders will last you a long time. So don't worry about layering up. And you can see how it almost looks like a tile here. Now for the fun part, I have my Misty stamping tool with this Simon Says Stamp outline leaf stamp in place. I'm temporarily taping my tile inside of the Misty, and I'll apply heat to it to reheat up or remelt all of the embossing glaze. You will know that it is completely heated when you can kind of see the glaze rippling or moving around from the heat. Notice I'm moving my gun around a lot to make sure that it is all remelted. Then I quickly press my stamp right into that hot embossing glaze. You want to put some muscle into this. You could put a die cut machine on top for pressure or just put your own muscle into it and count it as exercise. Once you give it a few minutes there, you can pull the stamp away and check out the impression we did. 
Now notice I have some spots where I didn't make a great impression. That's okay. We can reheat this. I could leave it this way, cover up those areas or just live with it, but know that if you want to, you could reheat it, remelt all of that embossing glaze and repeat the process. I kept this in the video just to show you that you have that option. I probably would have gone with that first impression if I were on my own, but I wanted to show this reheating process in the video. So again, I will press that stamp into the hot embossing glaze, leave it there for a couple minutes with some pressure, and then pull it off the stamp. Now this works best with rubber stamps, such as this cling background stamp or a wood mounted stamp. You could do it with a clear stamp if you wanted, but I would cover it with Versamark ink first before doing so. So just ink up your clear stamp heavily with Versamark ink and then press that in. But again, this is best with wood mounted or rubber cling stamps like this. This time I'm really happy with the results. Sometimes when you do this, you get kind of rough edges where the impression happen. So I just give it a quick heat with a heat gun just to kind of soften the impression and look at this. You can see the gold sprinkling in it and look at all that shine. It has a really neat look to it, kind of like a jelly bean, but with that great impression and texture. Much better than you would get with a regular embossing powder. Okay, let's pull this together into a card. Next, I stamped on my four and a quarter by five and a half inch white note card with the Simon Says Stamp Shamrock Background Stamp. I put my Misty Sticky Mat into my Misty Stamping Tool so I could hold my card in place as I stamp on it. So again, this is a folded note card and I'll stamp with Simon Says Stamp Saturated Ink. Now, if you've never used this ink before, I encourage you to try it. They recently came out with a bunch of new colors. I'll link to them below. I just find that the color selection is wonderful. They're like jelly bean colors. I don't know what my deal is with jelly beans. I don't actually eat them, but they have the best jelly bean color selection. Gorgeous. Now I'm gluing our tile right into the center of the note card. To finish off the card, I use the Simon Says Stamp Branch Die that I've used many times in videos and cut that from vellum. And I also used the Spellbinders Delicate Butterfly Die Set. I used the dies from this to create a butterfly from white cardstock and gold glitter. I like that these uh, dies can be used, the outline or the inside parts together or separately. I use them together for this example. I wanted my vellum leaves to kind of come out from behind the butterfly. I chose to use vellum so that it didn't really block that tile that we created. So you can see plenty of the tile, the texture, and the little sprinkle of glitter that we put into it. I'm using the glue on the back of the butterfly to hold those vellum die cuts in place. I also stamped Praying Hard For You on a white cardstock strip, and that is from the Well Wishes stamp set that I showed you earlier in this video. That will also help to hold those vellum die cut pieces into place. So I press everything down, just leave it there to dry and it'll hold nicely. Here's a look at the completed card. Now I did add some Studio Katia gold sparkle crystals. These are clear with glitter in the inside. And so I feel like it matches nicely with the gold glitter cardstock I used on the butterfly. I used liquid adhesive to add those gemstones and those also help to hold our vellum die cut in place. Now check out that textured tile that we created with the gold glitter inside. It's such a fun technique that works especially well with the embossing glaze. You can do it with embossing powders, but I really feel like the look of this is just beautiful. You can mix different colors, but that twisted citron is such a beautiful color when you layer many layers together. Okay, my next technique for using embossing glaze is to do layering. Layering of the different colors of powders to create different looks. This is especially effective when you use layered stencils. I'm starting by using my embossing anti-static powder tool on white cardstock since we'll be doing heat embossing. I'm also working on my waffle flower stencil mat. It just helps me to line up my stencils. Now I'm starting with the first stencil of four that come in the Radiating Square stencil set, which is new from Simon Says Stamp. I place the first stencil in the corner of my Waffle Flower Media Mat, along with the white cardstock, and I'm pressing Versamark ink into the openings using my ink blending tool. 
Now you can't see the ink, but when I put my Salty Ocean Distress Embossing Glaze over it, you can see that it picks up all of the powder and then we can heat set it. Now you could do this technique with regular opaque or non-see-through embossing powders, but by using the embossing glaze, you'll be able to see the layers of the translucent embossing powder and how it creates new colors. So bear with me. Now it's time for stencil number two. I use my anti-static powder tool. I will place the st next stencil in place and press Versamark ink over that too. Every time I use Versamark ink, you could use a colored, say, Distress Oxide ink, and that will change the color of the embossing glaze you put on top. Because the embossing glaze is just tinted, it will mix with whatever color ink you put behind it. That's why I use a clear ink behind it, so the glaze will stay true to color because I love these colors. This time I use the Salty Ocean color, the first time I use the Broken China. And here you can see the beautiful glaze look we get by doing this technique. You could use colored ink and clear embossing powder, but again, when we start layering, it is an advantage to use the colored glazes. Okay, so now we're on to stencil number three. There are four in the set and they're very easy to line up. I'll press Versamark ink over this entire stencil. Once I'm done, I'm adding cracked pistachio embossing glaze over this. Now I'm kind of speeding through and not showing all of this embossing because it's the same process we do for any embossing powder. Now for the fourth and final stencil, I did it off screen, I used the speckled egg color and it just adds those little triangles to the center of the squares. Okay, now for the fun part, I am using my anti-static powder tool. I do that between every layer and I'm going back to the first stencil. Now originally it was lined up like this, but now I'm gonna offset it and apply more embossing glaze in a different color over it. So I've offset that first stencil and this will cause a lot of the stencil areas to be overlapped. When you overlap embossing glaze, you get new colors. This time I did Twisted Citron and you'll see that it overlaps with all the other colors we did before. So we're gonna add so much interest to this background. When you heat set this, you'll see that when it overlaps with like the broken china color, you get a teal color. When it overlaps with the speckled egg, you get like a grayish green color. It's a fun way to really build up your layering stencils. Once again, I'm going back to the second stencil, offsetting it a bit, applying Versamark ink over it. And this time I will add embossing glaze and it'll again layer up. So all of this layering will create new colors. This time I did the speckled egg once again. So we're just building color on color and because these are translucent, see-through colors, just tinted clear embossing powders, we get more colors in the final result. Now you could leave it with a white background if you wanted to, but I wanted to soften it a bit to have less contrast. So I'm taking a soft kind of pool color ink and blending it over our entire glazed background. Now remember, embossing powder and embossing glaze resists any ink you put on top. So by applying this color on top, anywhere is ex that is exposed cardstock will pick up that color. But anywhere we used embossing glaze will stay true to the color of glaze we used. So I'm buffing the excess ink off of the raised areas. Then I just reheat up all of that embossing glaze, which will make it shiny again. And now we have the soft blue or pool colored background with all those bold colors on top. I could have started with a soft pool cardstock and added all those colors, but it would have changed the colors I put on top by starting with white, doing colorful embossing glaze, and then putting ink over that, we're able to get true colors. Now on our card, I did a light color of ink over the Distress embossing glaze. Here's an example on my scrap where I put a darker color of ink. The Distress embossing glaze resists it. So this is a really cool look where you can have a dark background with lighter embossing glaze colors on top. Now back to our card, I finished it off by trimming it down and adding it to a four and a quarter by five and a half inch top folding white note card. The you can do this sentiment is from the Well Wishes stamp set I showed you at the beginning of this video. 
I used the Salty Ocean Embossing Glaze to do the sentiment on white cardstock. I love that look of the embossing glaze for a sentiment. It matches the background perfectly. You can see how where the embossing glaze colors overlap, you get new colors. So it creates an amazing looking background with so much detail and interest. I did add some gemstones to the intersection of some of the different colors just for added dimension. So different colors of embossing glaze are great for layering to create new colors. Okay, now it's time for another technique. This time is a trapped embossed resist where you trap stamping under your embossing glaze and then it makes it stand out even more. I'm starting with a piece of white cardstock and I'm stamping the Simon Says Stamp Friendship Background with a new dark color of Simon Says Stamp Saturated Ink. You could use any stamp you want here, but I think something with small detail is best, such as a text stamp. After I've stamped this, I will heat set it to make sure the ink is completely dry and I will use my anti-static powder tool. Now I have the new Simon Says Stamp Clover Wreath Stencil. Any stencil would work here, but something with large areas is better, such as the clover leaves on this stencil. Over the stencil, I'll apply Versamark ink once again, using my mini ink blending tool. You really want to press this in and make sure you get a lot of that ink into the stencil openings. It's a clear ink, so it's kind of hard to see, so just make sure you cover all of the area as well. Once you're done, you can remove the stencil and add any of the embossing glazes. I use the Twisted Citron. Again, that's one of my favorites. After heat setting it and letting it cool for a bit, I'll line the stencil back up and do another layer of the Versamark ink right on top of the glaze that we've already heat set. This will just make the layer thicker and it'll make the embossing glaze darker. You could leave it one layer if you want to but I really like the color that results. It's more of a Kelly green instead of a lime green when you do two layers on top. You also get more dimension this way, but you could definitely stick with one layer if you prefer. Now over this cooled embossing powder, I'm applying darker green. Now I started with that same color that I used to stamp the friendship text, but I decided that was a little bit too blue. It's a beautiful color, but I wanted it to be a little more green. So I'm going back over it in areas with the, another color of green saturated ink and just kind of making my own ink blend here. I'm trying to make it a bit uneven so it kind of adds some interest. And I buff off the excess ink once I'm done. The embossing glaze resists this dark ink we're putting on top. That's why we want to buff off the excess ink when we're done. And you have that beautiful bright green embossing glaze in that wreath pattern and you can see that text stamping through it and then you have the darker green around it this is a great way to kind of trap a stamped image behind your embossing to finish this off i trimmed it down and added it to a four and a quarter by five and a half inch white note card and i used the new simon says stamp cz design here for you die set i also die cut some vellum flowers using the Spellbinders Mini Blooms and Sprigs die set. This is one of my favorites. On the back of those vellum flowers, I did a little dot of strong liquid adhesive and then added a small foam square. This way I can have dimension behind my die cuts, but I can be sure that it stays secure thanks to the strong liquid adhesive. I then added these vellum flowers to our wreath. Now I know this is a clover wreath, but I thought by adding flowers, I just made it a regular wreath, extending the life of that stencil. I also added some of the glitter gemstones that I used earlier to the center of the flowers and in different areas on the wreath. Now the Here For You die cut, I cut the shadow from white and the words Here For You from gold glitter cardstock. I did add additional die cut layers behind it to make it stand out even more. So here's a look at the final result. When you look close, you can see how we trapped that bold stamping behind that bright green embossing glaze. And then it has the dark green all around it. It's such a great way to step up a stencil and give it a completely different look. This is one of the best techniques you can do with Tim Holtz embossing glaze. And I show a variation of this in that other video, which again, I'll link at the top right here. 
Okay, now for our final technique using embossing glaze. This one is definitely my favorite and it is to create a tinted acetate, which is wonderful for many things in crafting, but especially shaker cards. Notice that the window of this shaker card is tinted. So I have a piece of Simon Says Stamp heat resistant acetate. Any type of acetate or clear window for a shaker card will work as long as it can handle heat. I really like this heat resistant acetate from Simon Says Stamp. It's perfect for this. I press Versamark ink over the entire piece and now I'm adding cracked pistachio embossing glaze over the acetate. I will heat set this and basically what you end up with is a colored acetate. This is a great way to change up your shaker cards or your clear cards by adding a tint of color to the plain clear acetate. So I'll hold this over a piece of white cardstock and you'll see that tint of color and it is gorgeous. Now you could make this darker or more intense by adding another layer, or you can add another layer of another color and create a new color. I like to do two layers so it's nice and smooth and has a good amount of tint to it so it stands out against the busy background I'll use on this card. For the walls of this shaker card, I chose to use the Waffle Flower Nesting Rectangle Frame Die Set. You could use any shape or use two single rectangle dies that are close in size and die cut them together. I cut a few of these rectangle frames and I'm putting double-sided adhesive along the back of one of them. I will then place this onto our tinted acetate that we tinted with the embossing glaze and trim off the excess. When making a shaker window, it is best to add additional frames behind your acetate so it stands up from your card so that the shaker bits you put inside have some room to wiggle around. So I have three die cut frames here that I will glue to the back of our acetate. So there's one die cut frame on the front of our acetate and three behind it. You could do more if you wanted to. This is a great shaker window with a fun color tint to it. For the background of my card, I used the new Simon Says Stamp Interlocking Circle Stencil Set. This is a layering set with four stencils that creates a beautiful, fun background pattern. I'm not going to show all of the inking of the four stencils as it'll take up too much time, but I just did basic lining up of the stencils and applied a different color of Simon Says Stamp saturated ink over each. This is a great stencil set because it creates what looks like a pattern paper, but you can do it in whatever colors you want. Now, the fun part about the shaker window we created is that it has that tint to it, so it allows it to stand out against that busy background, it creates a focal point. I also decided to die cut a bunch of small pink hearts to add to our stenciled background for just little enhancements. This is the Simon Says Stamp Mini Hearts Party Die. I die cut it from light pink cardstock and I'm adding those tiny pink hearts to the center of those bright pink heart squares that we inked with the stencil. This is all trimmed down and added to a four and a quarter by five and a half inch note card. I also used the Simon Says Stamp Love You So Much die set, which is new. I die cut the Love You So Much from white cardstock three times, glued that together, and then glued that right under the front of our shaker window. There is a shadow die included in the set, which I really like. I just didn't use it for this particular card. Okay, so now we can add some shaker bits inside of the window. I chose some flat uh, kind of um, holographic looking sequins, and then also some clear baubles, and added those right to the center of our card. I then put glue along the outside back of our shaker window frame and glued that right over our pile of shaker bits, let that dry there for a bit, and then our card is complete. I did also add a larger pink heart die cut to the Love You So Much sentiment. So now you can see those little shaker bits shaking underneath that tinted window acetate that we created. This is a fun way to kind of make that shaker window a little bit more muted so that the focal point on top of it stands out more, but you can still see through it and see those sparkly bits move. So next time you're creating an acetate card, shaker window, or any other clear element, remember you can use your embossing glaze to tint that acetate any color you want. 
All right, there you have five fun ways to use embossing glaze creatively to really make your cards stand out and have lots of color and texture and shine. In my description below, I have links to all of the different products I've used. And here at the end, I link to a couple other videos that may be inspiring to you along with that other embossing glaze video. Thanks for watching. Have a wonderful day and we'll see you soon.